Good morning guys and welcome to the Monday morning sidewalk. Actually we're here on a Sunday afternoon with the weather changing quickly. I don't think we're going to be able to come out on a Monday morning. We've got another cool front coming in overnight between Sunday and Monday and it'll be the second one in about four days. And it's been a great change in weather actually. We've got a situation where the fly fishing on the coast is heating up immensely in the shallow waters fishing for redfish. I've seen a lot of images of nice reds being caught and I'm just going to dive right into this and tell you that if you're near the coast or can get to the coast and you see those stars lining up and you see the tides line up it's time to go to the coast and fish. It really is. Uh, the redfish are turned on and I've read somewhere, I can't remember where I read this, but we've had a little bit higher than high tides, higher than normal and that means water has been getting up into the marshes, shrimp are in the marshes and from what I heard just yesterday when, those, when the tide starts to change and the shrimp start to get washed out of those marshes, the reds are just right there on the edge of those grass lines and they are just munching. And we're talking gorging fish that have huge distended bellies on them. So that will be really fun. And of course redfish are a lot easier to catch than carp so if you're uh, in a place where you've been able to warm up and tune up on carp then you have a great, great opportunity to get to the coast right now and catch reds. Um, as we move into the the fall season you can hear the wind chimes going off you know the weather's changing and of course it's getting cooler um, what you'll find is that uh, we do have a little residual bounce here what I call a dead cat bounce in the fall where uh, the fish start to feed just a little bit more when they feel those temperatures change and the days are shorter and they can tell that um, they will go for that last feed in the fall before winter time kicks in so be sure that you're prepared to you know go after some bass carp here in North Texas are pretty much gone at least on Ray Roberts and you know we're still uh, doing the scientific research to find out what exactly is going on with that but I think we can credit a lot of the problems we're having with uh, the carp situation to uh, the zebra mussel so there's not a lot of people who care about what happens to a you know a fish like a carp if it was bass well then we'd have probably news crews out there but uh, there's not a lot of people who care about the uh, biology and the, the science of, of where the carp went. So that's which something we just have to live with and do the research on our own because we're not going to get TPWD to come out and figure out where a carp went. And that's okay. What I wanted to do is keep this kind of short. You know, this stuff's going on on the coast. If you're near the coast, you got to get there. You got to fish. You know, check your tides, check the weather. The storms that are accompanying these fronts that come through are pretty severe, but they're pretty short lasting. So they they start here and within you know eight hours they're in Houston so they're fast moving short lasting fronts front lines that come through and if you're on the coast you just have to be really careful when you see that come through and check the radar on your phones it's the best way to go and it's very accurate I have a tip for you to end this uh, Monday morning sidewalk and that is a, a cooking tip actually we've got a plant that we grew started growing about two years ago in the yard called the Hoya Santa and if you read the uh, information on the website, on the story, uh, this Monday morning story, you'll find out some more names for this plant and stuff. But what I want to do is I'm just going to take you over here and show you this Hoya Santa plant. And it's a really a fantastic plant. It grows in, in Central South America, Mexico, and in South Florida. And it's a really neat plant because you can use it as a spice chopped up, or you can actually use it to wrap tamales. I'll tell you more about it. We'll just go over there and take a look at the Hoya Santa, a very cool plant growing right here in our yard here in Denton, Texas. Hey guys, this is a plant called the Hoya Santa. It's got several names, but it's a really cool plant. It's growing here in North Texas. It grows quite well nowadays with the change in environment. And uh, it comes up from the ground. And it's uh, kind of, they got a lot of them growing in South Florida and then Central and South America, in Mexico. And it's used and you can use it to actually use it as a wrapper for wrapping tamales. This plant's, you know, it's the end of the season, so it's getting kind of ragged looking, but wrap your tamales with this leaf instead of a traditional wrapper. You can also wrap fish in this and cook on the grill with the Hoya Santa leaf. And it can be shredded and added to other spices, but it's a fantastic plant growing here in our yard. And I think that uh, it's, it's very beautiful to look at. And, it's one of those plants that will tell you when it needs water. It doesn't need a lot of water. When it does, the leaves will start to fall and you water it and it just perks right back up. And this plant started as a single plant and now you can see it's spreading from the ground 
all across here and it'll die back in the winter time and then come back in the spring but uh, keep in mind the Hoya Santa look for one at your local uh, place where you buy your plants or um, look for the spice at a perhaps a Mexican type grocery store the Hoya Santa thanks again for watching guys I just want to take this last second to say that uh, I appreciate the people that endorse me and I endorse them that would be Tailwaters Dallas that's Haller Brothers. If you don't know who Haller Brothers are, check them out at hallerbros.com. And also the band. Those guys are the same guys that are the band Wrinkle Neck Mule, some of the best fly fishing music you'll ever hear. There's also Sims and there's TFO Fly Rods. Who I, TFO's got a great rod. If you're headed to the coast, don't know what rod to buy, I strongly recommend you take a look. At, and if you're looking for redfish, I strongly recommend you take a look at the TFO Mangrove Rod and, and, a, and an 8 weight seven or eight weight you won't be disappointed so thanks to those people who believe in the messages coming out here and if you've got a message to, to put out if you've got images you want to send in of your fly fishing anywhere in texas or anywhere just be sure and send it to me and i'll be glad to publish it and give you proper credit for for the information and you know anything you can tell us that you think other people be interested in we'd love to hear about it thanks for watching have a great week